This is an Asian sheep's head, one of the largest members of the Ras family. They spend their whole lives in the rocky reefs of Japan and Korea, but under certain conditions, some undergo a massive transformation. The Asian sheep's head can change sex, from female to male. Females grow larger and more aggressive, and they develop the bulbous forehead and chin typically seen in males. For these fish, sex change is a usual part in their life cycle, and it's one that carries adaptive advantages. Sequential hermaphroditism occurs when an organism changes sex at some point in its life. It's seen in a few species of gastropods and plants, but mostly fish, like Napoleon fish, clownfish, groupers, and marine angelfish. This transformation involves the complete restructuring of their gonads, as well as changes in their morphology and behavior. Sequential hermaphroditism comes in three forms, protogyny, switching from female to male, protandry, switching from male to female, and serial bidirectional sex change, where an individual switches between the sexes. Typically, hermaphrodites change sex when they reach a certain size or age, or by social changes. In clownfish, groups are structured into a strict hierarchy, with the largest and most aggressive female at the top. Although in a group there may be multiple males, there's only ever one breeding pair, and it's between the dominant female and the largest male. But when she dies, her male partner changes sex and takes her place. This new female will then show aggression and dominance over the others. The remaining males will also move up a rank on the hierarchy, until a new mating pair is formed in the group. In these clownfish, it's the removal of the dominant female that controls the transformation. The most popular explanation for sex change is the size advantage hypothesis. It predicts that sex changing genes may be selected for when it's better to be a certain sex at a certain size. This model can be presented in a simple graph showing the expected fertility against body size for males and females. For Protogyno species, you can see that females have a higher fertility at a lower body size until the males overtake them when their body size increases. An organism that, as it grows, changes to the sex more advantageous with its current size would therefore increase its reproductive potential. In many Ras species, the larger they get, the better it is to be a male. Male size advantage is especially high in mating systems, where one large dominant male has a harem of females to mate with. These large males have a superior competitive ability. They can fight against rivals, defend their territory and monopolize matings. Because small males stand no chance at mating, females only change sex when they are large enough. When the dominant male in the group dies, the largest female will then transform to take his place. The size advantage hypothesis may explain the evolution of sex change, but there are still cases where these fish don't change sex when given the opportunity. One study proposes that other factors come into play. If the largest female is much larger than the remaining members in the group, then she may be more fertile than all of the smaller females combined. This means she may have more offspring by being a large female instead of changing into a male and mating with the others. Another factor is sperm competition. High sperm competition can lower the chances of a male successfully fertilizing eggs, and so this may put off females from changing sex. Although most sequential hermaphrodites can only change sex once, some species can do so as many times as they please. Some examples are the gobies in the genera Gobiodon and Paragobiodon. These reef fish live among the protective branches of corals, often as single breeding pairs, but sometimes in groups. 
their unique strategy of flipping between sexes could have evolved due to high predation. Because colonies tend to be isolated from each other, searching for mates across large distances can be too risky. This may provide a selective advantage for any stay-at-home individual that could choose to change sex when they need to. Sex changing allows any two fish to form a heterosexual breeding pair, which reduces the predation risk when finding a partner, as well as the time between breeding events. But how does sex change work at a molecular level? Well, it's believed that stress plays a key role in the mechanism. For example, in Protogynous species, when the dominant male in the group is removed, this leads to a significant increase in cortisol, a stress hormone, in the dominant female. This response can cause rapid signaling changes throughout her brain, making her more aggressive with other males and more flirty with other females. The stress also initiates a complete restructuring of her gonads. First, the production of aromatase a hormone responsible for making estrogen, is turned off. Then, male-related genes that promote oocyte degeneration and spermatogenesis are switched on. Eventually, the fish's ovaries disintegrate and fully functioning testes grow in their place. Although the evolution of sex change has been favoured by natural selection, it's actually a rare strategy. Why it's not more common is still unknown, but it may have something to do with the large costs associated with the transformation. For example, sex change takes time, and while the gonads are being restructured, sexual activity is decreased. There may also be some genetic consequences. Sequential hermaphrodites usually have a sex ratio that's more biased towards the initial sex. Because of this, the effective population size may be reduced, and this could lead to higher rates of genetic drift, inbreeding, and loss of genetic diversity. While these factors may have limited the evolution of sex change in a wider range of species, for the hermaphrodite fish, the grass really is greener on the other side.